This video is brought to you by our friends at Gorilla Car Care, a premium detailing product at an affordable price and your classic car or truck's best friend for maintaining a showroom shine. Go to GorillaCarCare.com today. Hey guys, well, I have to admit that I was wrong. In a recent podcast, I said that the Jeep Commander, these guys, was one of my most hated vehicles of all time. And I have to admit that I have, uh, I've kind of come around a little bit on these and these do get a lot of hate out in the community. There are some people out there that love them and I'm starting to kind of dig them and I'm gonna tell you why. So everybody nowadays is looking for something retro, something a little more boxy. And I think when this came out in 2006, it was ahead of its time by having that boxy styling. In fact, this kind of reminds me of a Jeep Cherokee XJ, which gets so much love in the Jeep community and for good reason. But this kind of looks like a bloated, bigger version of that XJ. Um, and yeah, I really dig this boxy styling that it has. And yeah, it's, it's kind of big. It has a presence on the road. And I think, honestly, they hit it out of the park as far as the styling goes. So we do have two different versions of this Commander. And this is the base model. And this has the base engine, which was a 3.7 liter V6, putting out about 210 horsepower through its quadra track one system and what that did is it supplied four-wheel drive power to all four wheels with no driver input so there's no four low or four high or anything like that it's kind of just like a full-time four-wheel drive system but these engines aren't bad they're not the best <laughs> jeep engines that have ever been made but they're pretty serviceable they're plentiful to find parts for and the power isn't awful now, if it were my money, this is the engine that I would get. This is the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that in 2008, which this is a 2008, was putting out 330 horsepower. Now, if you did get an 09 or a 2010, this put out 360 horsepower. But not only that, it was an upgraded four-wheel drive system, so it didn't come with the Quadratrack sorry, Quadra Track, that's kind of hard to say. Uh, one, it came with the Quadra Track 2, which added a four low system. So that made it a lot more fun and capable off-road. Now these could even be optioned with a Quadra Drive 2, which added skid plates and limited slip differentials. inside i will admit when i put this on my list of cars that i hated most i had actually not driven one of these but since having sit being able to sit in the driver's seat i will say even on this base model it's pretty comfortable it feels like a fairly spacious suv i mean we're not talking suburban space but it is a fairly spacious suv you do have a really large dash here where you even have the kind of flat spot where you can put a few things and moving down you have just kind of a basic analog gauge set with st uh, some tiny little screen showing your mileage and you know some warnings down there and then a very basic steering wheel because again this is the base model where you can cycle through some of those things um, but down here you do have just your typical Chrysler radio, which does have an aux on it, uh, at least for this one with being a 2010. I don't know if the earlier ones came with that. And then just kind of your basic HVAC controls with big chunky knobs and an easy to use interface. Um, and then you'll see when you move down to here that there is no sort of four wheel drive selector because this one is just an all time four wheel drive system. Now the one feature that this does have is it does have parking sensors on it and you can turn them on and off right here with that switch. So if you had to sit in the second row of the Commander, you will see that you get kind of a stadium seating where you're sitting up a little bit higher than the front passengers. And not only that, the roof is kind of sloped a little bit to, to give you an equal amount of headroom to those front passengers. But I do have a decent amount of leg room here. I don't have 
any creature comforts at all. All I can do is really kind of aim where my vents are blowing, but I can't control them. I can't charge my devices. I do have a, you know, armrest with some pop-out cup holders, but that's pretty much it. Now the third row is where things start to go downhill. So to get to the third row, no one can be sitting here. You can't just slide them forward. You have to fold it flat, and then you have a little strap in the back here that you actually have to pull up to get the seat to move completely out of your way to be able to get into this third row. And as you can see, it's not super graceful, and it's kind of built for people with, uh, with no legs. I have to like tilt my head sideways just to fit in this, but oddly enough, I do have HVAC controls. So the second row doesn't have HVAC controls, but the third row does, which is kind of interesting. But uh, this is kind of where this car loses me a little bit. As a three row SUV, I don't know that I would ever want to put anybody in this penalty box. So now the rear, you can see that you can open the glass separate from the tailgate, but well, your storage back here is not great. I mean, it's maybe the width of my hand. Uh, so let's open this rear hatch so I can show you the full thing of what's going on back here. So as you can see with that third row up, yeah, there's not a lot of space back here. You do have, you know, your ability to change the tire with the jack and a few tools there hidden underneath this cover. That actually does take up quite a lot of space of what little storage you do have. You do get some grocery nets, which help add a little bit of usability back here, as well as a little storage net to give you a tiny bit of space in the back. But what you really want to do is just hold these seats down because let's be real, they're, they're not very useful to have. They're just kind of something you'd use in a pinch. But once you do have these folded back down, you do have a pretty decent amount of storage space back here, even more than a Grand Cherokee, which is what this is based on. All right, so I'm in the Commander with the base 3.7. Let's fire it up and see how it sounds. It's, uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's not, a, not a bad sounding engine. But um, yeah, let's let's be real. There's there's no sporting intentions with these uh, 3.7s. Um, <laughs> they're they're serviceable and they're fine. But you know, this if I were to get a Commander, this probably wouldn't be the one. But I'm driving it for you guys because I want something a benchmark to compare it to. Now this one definitely has like some sort of uh, clunk going on in the front, so it needs probably some suspension address, so I won't hold any suspension issues or ride quality against this one, considering it's probably got some deferred maintenance going on. But I will say, this does feel very cavernous. You do have great visibility with this being such an upright, boxy design. And I've got a little test track here where I'm going to give a little squirt, maybe up to 30 or 40 miles an hour, just to see how the performance is on it. So let's do it. Oh, wow, that's slow. Oh, that's really slow. Yeah, um, I couldn't even get it up to 30 miles an hour. <laughs> I, I, I will be honest, there are base model, um, you know, like Cobalts and whatnot that I'm able to get up to 40 miles an hour on that test track. This guy got up to 30. So yeah, this, if you were to get a Commander and you were to buy one of these, just know that it's just kind of basic transportation. There's there's no towing going on with this. There's there's nothing fast about it. There's nothing really luxurious about it. But if you just look at it as basic SUV that's good in inclement weather, yeah, I could see the appeal of this one. But let's hop in the uh, the one that I would get. Now, if you were to find one that's got a few more options than that other guy, sorry about this one, it's a little dirty. This is a dealer auction. Let me turn it on to kind of show you what we have going on. So you do actually have, oh geez, it's really dirty, an actual screen here rather than just your basic radio. And believe it or not, this actually has a backup camera that 
I think the sensor is <laughs> stuck on or something like that. But you could option this with a backup camera and a touch screen to be able to do your different radio things. And you do have a, you know, little place to plug in your devices, navigation system. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty decent radio. And not only that, but moving down, you do have climate control where you can set it to auto and you can choose the actual temperature that you have blowing out and you can get some heated seats and speaking of seats these are nice leather and they are actually a little more plush i would say a little more comfortable and over on my side here you do have some uh, buttons to be able to move your foot pedals in and out and then this has that upgraded uh all-wheel drive system so you can actually push for low if you're taking this into some off-roading and then one other nice thing too is you do get a household style outlet which is in the back and so with that upgraded four-wheel drive system you do get a hill descent control and with the bigger engine you do get the tow haul mode so in the back seat you do get that household style outlet right here down in the center and then above that you have some rca uh, inputs which goes to the screen that you do have above with a controller so if you want to plug in your PlayStation 3 or you want to bring a DVD or VHS player with you the rear seat passengers can have their own entertainment going on and not only that above them they each get their own individual little skylight I guess I would call it because it's not really a sunroof like the front seat passengers have but you do each get your own skylight and if you're worried about that sun coming in you can just pull it over and lock it in and have a nice little shade to cover you in your luxurious spacious second row all right so starting up the commander with a 5.7 liter hemi let's give this guy some revs and see how it sounds Yeah, I kind of dig that that Hemi sound. Now, uh, this particular Commander, uh, the HVAC controls aren't working, so if you're hearing a little bit of wind noise in the background or a little bit of howling, I apologize. We cannot turn off this HVAC. It is just kind of blowing constantly. But sitting in this seat, again, I have great visibility. This seat is probably a little more padded because it feels a little more squishy. Maybe it's just the fact that it's got 80,000 miles more than the other one that I just drove, so it's got a lot more seat time going on in it. But what I am most curious about is how the performance is going to differ. Now I'm pulling up here to our little test track, and I had gotten that other one up to 30 miles an hour. Let's see how quick I can get this guy going on our little test track here. Oh yeah, the power difference is immediately evident and a little over about 45 miles an hour onto the brakes hard before hitting so I don't hit that wall there. So yeah, you can see the performance difference is huge. Not only that, with this Quadra Drive 2 system, this is actually a trail rated Jeep. So if you want to do some serious off-roading, it is a lot more capable off-road than the base model. And not only that, because you have that 5.7 liter engine, you have a towing hitch in the back because this vehicle can actually tow, unlike the base 3.7. So this is a much more usable vehicle. You can do off-roading, you can do towing. It's uh, somewhat quick. You know, I think it's a good all-around SUV, and if you really like that boxy Jeep styling, I get it. So with this being able to tow, it can actually tow up to 7,400 pounds, which, you know, compared to a pickup truck is not a ton, but if you're comparing that to other three-row SUVs, like, I think this would tow a little bit more than the Suburban would. Now, if you got, like, a heavy-duty Suburban, those would actually tow a bit more than this guy. So it's fairly capable as far as towing goes. And the other thing that I found interesting is the base model 3.7 MPG gets up to 20 miles to the gallon on the highway, which is, it's okay. It's decent. It's not bad for the time. Uh, but this with the 5.7 and the Gobsmore power and the towing capability, it only nets you a penalty of three miles to the gallon, getting 17 miles to the gallon on the highway. And I just don't think that that's that much of a penalty to pay for all of the extra nice things that you get in this guy. 
and it just makes it a much more worthwhile vehicle to get. So in 2010, then CEO Sergio Marchoni of Chrysler, uh, he basically said that the Commander was unfit for human consumption and he said, we sold some, but I don't know why. And well, you know, I, I will say if I was shopping for a three row SUV, a used three row SUV that could also do some off-roading, I might lean a little more towards like a GMT 800 or even 400 platform uh, from, you know, General Motors. But if you're a Mopar guy, and you like Jeeps to do some Jeep type off-roading, but you also want a large SUV, I kind of get it. They're pretty comfortable. They're pretty spacious. This one's got over 200,000 miles on it, so it has to be at least relatively reliable to make it that far. And I kind of dig the styling. I will say I was wrong. And these, well, they're not so bad. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. And for everything else, check out all TFL. This has been Brendan and Cole behind the camera. Thanks for watching.